Chapter 10 Now Maccabeus and his company, the Lord guiding them, recovered the temple and the city. But the altars which the heathen had built in the open street, and also the chapels, they pulled down. And having cleansed the temple, they made another altar, and striking stones they took fire out of them, and offered a sacrifice after two years, and set forth incense, and lights, and showbread. When that was done, they fell flat down, and besought the Lord that they might come no more into such troubles. But if they sinned any more against him, that he himself would chasten them with mercy, and that they might not be delivered unto the blasphemous and barbarous nations. Now upon the same day that the strangers profaned the temple, on the very same day it was cleansed again, even the five and twentieth day of the same month, which is Caslo. And they kept the eight days with gladness, as in the Feast of the Tabernacles, remembering that not long afore they had held the Feast of the Tabernacles, when as they wandered in the mountains and dens like beasts, therefore they bare branches and fair boughs and palms also, and sang psalms unto him that had given them good success in cleansing his place. They ordained also by a common statute and decree that every year those days should be kept of the whole nation of the Jews. And this was the end of Antiochus, called Epiphanes. Now, will we declare the acts of Antiochus Eupater, who was the son of this wicked man, gathering briefly the calamities of the wars? So when he was come to the crown, he set one Lysias over the affairs of his realm and appointed him his chief governor of Seleucia and Phoenice. For Ptolemaeus, that was called Macron, choosing rather to do justice unto the Jews for the wrong that had been done unto them, endeavored to continue peace with them. Whereupon, being accused of the king's friends before Eupater, and called traitor at every word, because he had left Cyprus, that Philometor had committed unto him, and departed to Antiochus Epiphanes, and seeing that he was in no honorable place, he was so discouraged that he poisoned himself and died. But when Gorgias was governor of the holds, he hired soldiers and nourished war continually with the Jews. And therewithal the Idumeans, having gotten into their hands the most commodious holds, kept the Jews occupied, and receiving those that were banished from Jerusalem, they went about to nourish war. Then they that were with Maccabeus made supplication, and besought God that he would be their helper, and so they ran with violence upon the strongholds of the Idumeans. And assaulting them strongly, they won the holds, and kept off all that fought upon the wall, and slew all that fell into their hands, and killed no fewer than twenty thousand. And because certain, who were no less than nine thousand, were fled together into two very strong castles, having all manner of things convenient to sustain the siege, Maccabeus left Simon and Joseph, and Zacchaeus also, and them that were with him, who were enough to besiege them, and departed himself unto those places which more needed his help. Now they that were with Simon, being led with covetousness, were persuaded for money through certain of those that were in the castle, and took seventy thousand drachms, and let some of them escape. But when it was told Maccabeus what was done, he called the governors of the people together and accused those men that they had sold their brethren for money and set their enemies free to fight against them. So he slew those that were found traitors and immediately took the two castles. And having good success with his weapons in all things, he took in hand, he slew in the two holds more than twenty thousand. Now Timotheus, whom the Jews had overcome before, when he had gathered a great multitude of foreign forces, and horses out of Asia not a few, came as though he would take Jewry by force of arms. But when he drew near, they that were with Maccabeus turned themselves to pray unto God, and sprinkled earth upon their heads, and girded their loins with sackcloth, and fell down at the foot of the altar, and besought him to be merciful to them, and to be an enemy to their enemies, and an adversary to their adversaries as the law declareth. So, after the prayer, they took their weapons and went on further from the city 
and when they drew near to their enemies, they kept by themselves. Now the sun being newly risen, they joined both together, the one part having together with their virtue, their refuge also unto the Lord for a pledge of their success and victory, the other side making their rage leader of their battle. But when the battle waxed strong, there appeared unto the enemies from heaven five comely men upon horses, with bridles of gold, and two of them led the Jews, and took Maccabeus betwixt them, and covered him on every side weapons, and kept him safe, but shot arrows and lightnings against the enemies, so that, being confounded with blindness, and full of trouble, they were killed. And there were slain of footmen twenty thousand and five hundred, and six hundred horsemen. As for Timotheus himself, he fled into a very strong hold, called Gara, where Chereus was governor. But they that were with Maccabeus laid siege against the fortress courageously four days. And they that were within, trusting to the strength of the place, blasphemed exceedingly and uttered wicked words. Nevertheless, upon the fifth day, early twenty young men of Maccabeus' company, inflamed with anger because of the blasphemies, assaulted the wall manly, and with a fierce courage killed all that they met withal. Others likewise ascending after them, whilst they were busied with them that were within, burnt the towers, and kindling fires burnt the blasphemers alive, and others broke open the gates, and, having received in the rest of the army, took the city, and killed Timotheus, that was hid in a certain pit, and Chereus his brother, with Apollophanes. When this was done, they praised the Lord with psalms and thanksgiving, who had done so great things for Israel, and given them the victory. Chapter 11 Not long after the Lysias the king's protector and cousin, who also managed the affairs, took sore displeasure for the things that were done. And when he had gathered about fourscore thousand with all the horsemen, he came against the Jews, thinking to make the city and habitation of the Gentiles, and to make a gain of the temple as of the other chapels of the heathen, and to set the high priesthood to sail every year, not at all considering the power of God, but puffed up with his ten thousands of footmen, and his thousands of horsemen, and his fourscore elephants. So he came to Judea, and drew near to Bethsura, which was a strong town, but distant from Jerusalem about five furlongs, and he laid sore siege unto it. Now when they that were with Maccabeus heard that he besieged the holds, they and all the people with lamentation and tears besought the Lord that he would send a good angel to deliver Israel. Then Maccabeus himself first of all took weapons, exhorting the other that they would jeopard themselves together with him to help their brethren. So they went forth together with a willing mind. And as they were at Jerusalem, there appeared before them on horseback one in white clothing, shaking his armor of gold. Then they praised the merciful God all together and took heart, insomuch that they were ready not only to fight with men, but with most cruel beasts, and to pierce through walls of iron. Thus they marched forward in their armor, having an helper from heaven, for the Lord was merciful unto them. And giving a charge upon their enemies like lions, they slew eleven thousand footmen, and sixteen hundred horsemen, and put all the other to flight. Many of them also being wounded escaped naked, and Lysias himself fled away shamefully, and so escaped. Who, as he was a man of understanding, casting with himself what loss he had had, and considering that the Hebrews could not be overcome, because the Almighty God helped them, he sent unto them, and persuaded them to agree to all reasonable conditions, and promised that he would persuade the king that he must needs be a friend unto them. Then Maccabeus consented to all that Lysias desired, being careful of the common good, and whatsoever Maccabeus wrote unto Lysias concerning the Jews, the king granted it. For there were letters written unto the Jews from Lysias to this effect, Lysias unto the people of the Jews sendeth greeting. John and Absalom who were sent from you, 
delivered me the petition subscribed and made request for the performance of the contents thereof. Therefore, what things soever were meet to be reported to the king, I have declared them, and he hath granted as much as might be. And if then ye will keep yourselves loyal to the state, hereafter also will I endeavor to be a means of your good. But of the particulars I have given order both to these and the other that came from me, to commune with you. Fare ye well. The hundred and eight and fortieth year, the four and twentieth day of the month Dioscorinthius. Now the king's letter contained these words, King Antiochus unto his brother, Lysias sendeth greeting. Since our father is translated unto the gods, our will is that they that are in our realm live quietly, that every one may attend upon his own affairs. We understand also that the Jews would not consent to our father for to be brought unto the custom of the Gentiles, but had rather keep their own manner of living for the which cause they require of us that we should suffer them to live after their own laws. Wherefore our mind is that this nation shall be in rest, and we have determined to restore them their temple, that they may live according to the customs of their forefathers. Thou shalt do well, therefore, to send unto them, and grant them peace, that when they are certified of our mind, they may be of good comfort, and ever go cheerfully about their own affairs. And the letter of the king unto the nation of the Jews was after this manner, King Antiochus sendeth greeting unto the council and the rest of the Jews. If ye fare well, we have our desire, we are also in good health. Menelaus declared unto us that your desire was to return home and to follow your own business. Wherefore they that will depart shall have safe conduct till the thirtieth day of Xanthicus, with security. And the Jews shall use their own kind of meats and laws, as before, and none of them any manner of ways shall be molested for things ignorantly done. I have sent also Menelaus, that he may comfort you. Fare ye well. In the hundred forty and eighth year, and the fifteenth day of the month, Xanthicus. The Romans also sent unto them a letter containing these words. Quintus Memmius and Titus Manlius, ambassadors of the Romans, send greeting unto the people of the Jews. Whatsoever Lysias the king's cousin hath granted, therewith we also are well pleased. But touching such things as he judged to be referred to the king, after ye have advised thereof, send one forthwith, that we may declare as it is convenient for you, for we are now going to Antioch. Therefore send some with speed, that we may know what is your mind. Farewell. This hundred and eight and fortieth year, the fifteenth day of the month Xanthicus. Chapter 12 When these covenants were made, Lysias went unto the king, and the Jews were about their husbandry. But of the governors of several places, Timotheus and Apollonius, the son of Genius, also Hieronymus and Demophon, and beside them Nicanor the governor of Cyprus would not suffer them to be quiet and live in peace. The men of Joppa also did such an ungodly deed. They prayed the Jews that dwelt among them to go with their wives and children into the boats which they had prepared, as though they had meant them no hurt. Who accepted of it according to the common decree of the city, as being desirous to live in peace? and suspecting nothing, but when they were gone forth into the deep, they drowned no less than two hundred of them. When Judas heard of this cruelty done unto his countrymen, he commanded those that were with him to make them ready. And calling upon God, the righteous judge, he came against those murderers of his brethren, and burnt the haven by night, and set the boats on fire, and those that fled thither he slew. And when the town was shut up, he went backward, as if he would return to root out all them of the city of Joppa. But when he heard that the Jamnites were minded to do in like manner unto the Jews that dwelt among them, he came upon the Jamnites also by night, and set fire on the haven and the navy, 
so that the light of the fire was seen at Jerusalem two hundred and forty furlongs off. Now when they were gone from thence, nine furlongs in their journey toward Timotheus, no fewer than five thousand men on foot and five hundred horsemen of the Arabians set upon him. Whereupon there was a very sore battle, but Judas sighed by the help of God got the victory, so that the nomads of Arabia, being overcome, besought Judas for peace, promising both to give him cattle and to pleasure him otherwise. Then Judas, thinking indeed that they would be profitable in many things, granted them peace, whereupon they shook hands, and so they departed to their tents. He went also about to make a bridge to a certain strong city, which was fenced about with walls and inhabited by people of divers countries, and the name of it was Caspis. But they that were within it put such trust in the strength of the walls and provision of victuals that they behaved themselves rudely toward them that were with Judas, railing and blaspheming and uttering such words as were not to be spoken. Wherefore Judas with his company, calling upon the great Lord of the world, who without rams or engines of war did cast down Jericho in the time of Joshua, gave a fierce assault against the walls, and took the city by the will of God, and made unspeakable slaughters, insomuch that a lake two furlongs broad near adjoining thereunto, being filled full, was seen running with blood. Then departed they from thence seven hundred and fifty furlongs, and came to Carica unto the Jews that are called Tubieni. But as for Timotheus, they found him not in the places, for before he had dispatched anything, he departed from thence, having left a very strong garrison in a certain hold. Howbeit Dosithius and Sosipater, who were of Maccabeus's captains, went forth, and slew those that Timotheus had left in the fortress, above ten thousand men. And Maccabeus ranged his army by bands, and set them over the bands, and went against Timotheus, who had about him an hundred and twenty thousand men of foot, and two thousand and five hundred horsemen. Now, when Timotheus had knowledge of Judas's coming, he sent the women and children and the other baggage unto a fortress called Carnian, for the town was hard to besiege, and uneasy to come unto, by reason of the straightness of all the places. But when Judas' his first band came in sight, the enemies, being smitten with fear and terror through the appearing of him who seeth all things, fled amain, one running into this way, another that way, so as that they were often heard of their own men, and wounded with the points of their own swords. Judas also was very earnest in pursuing them, killing those wicked wretches, of whom he slew about thirty thousand men. Moreover, Timotheus himself fell into the hands of Dosithius and Sosipater, whom he besought with much craft to let him go with his life, because he had many of the Jews' parents, and the brethren of some of them, who, if they put him to death, should not be regarded. So when he had assured them with many words that he would restore them without hurt, according to the agreement, they let him go for the saving of their brethren. Then Maccabeus marched forth to Carnion, and to the temple of Adargatus, and there he slew five and twenty thousand persons. And after he had put to flight and destroyed them, Judas removed the host toward Ephron, a strong city, wherein Lysias abode, and a great multitude of divers nations. And the strong young men kept the walls, and defended them mightily, wherein also was great provision of engines and darts. But when Judas and his company had called upon Almighty God, who with his power breaketh the strength of his enemies, they won the city, and slew twenty and five thousand of them that were within. From thence they departed to Scythopolis, which lieth six hundred furlongs from Jerusalem. But when the Jews that dwelt there had testified that the Scythopolitans dealt lovingly with them, and entreated them kindly in the time of their adversity. They gave them thanks, desiring them to be friendly still unto them, and so they came to Jerusalem, the feast of the weeks approaching. And after the feast, called Pentecost, they went forth against Gorgias, the governor of Idumea, who came out with three thousand men of foot and four hundred horsemen. And it happened that in their fighting together, 
a few of the Jews were slain, at which time Tosithius, one of Basinor's company, who was on horseback and a strong man, was still upon Gorgias, and taking hold of his coat drew him by force, and when he would have taken that cursed man alive, a horseman of Thracia coming upon him smote off his shoulder, so that Gorgias fled unto Marisa. Now when they that were with Gorgias had fought long and were weary, Judas called upon the Lord, that he would show himself to be their helper and leader of the battle. And with that, he began in his own language, and sung psalms with a loud voice, and rushing unawares upon Gorgias's men, he put them to flight. So Judas gathered his host, and came into the city of Odolam, and when the seventh day came, they purified themselves, as the custom was, and kept the Sabbath in the same place. And upon the day following, as the use had been, Judas and his company came to take up the bodies of them that were slain, and to bury them with their kinsmen in their father's graves. Now under the coats of every one that was slain, they found things consecrated to the idols of the Jamnites, which is forbidden the Jews by the law. Then every man saw that this was the cause wherefore they were slain. All men therefore praising the Lord, the righteous judge, who had opened the things that were hid, betook themselves unto prayer, and besought him that the sin committed might wholly be put out of remembrance. Besides, that noble Judas exhorted the people to keep themselves from sin, for so much as they saw before their eyes the things that came to pass for the sins of those that were slain. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of two thousand drachms of silver, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, doing therein very well and honestly, in that he was mindful of the resurrection. For if he had not hoped that they that were slain should have risen again, it had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. And also in that, he perceived that there was great favor laid up for those that died godly. It was an holy and good thought. Whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead, that they might be delivered from sin.